Hi everybody, it's Mr. Nolan, and uh, what I would like to do with you in this video is show you how to use the Thermal Properties Simulator. We can see a little screen grab of it here. I also want to show you some of the results from the simulator. Uh, so the, in the event that you can't get it to work for whatever reason, you can just keep watching this video and, and I'll show you what the results are, but it's a lot better if you use the simulator yourself um, and, uh, and, and do it uh, sort of go your own way. Um, in order to be successful in this assignment, uh, this Thermal Properties uh, simulator work that we're going to do. You need this document. Uh, it's called Web Lab, What Can Water Do That a Brick Can't? So you can kind of start thinking, well, we're sort of going to compare water and a brick. What's different about these in terms of heat? So we're going to try to come to some conclusions about how water interacts with heat. Uh, and uh, I have some practical sort of application questions for you to, to think through. There's some background here I want you to read. There are two videos you need to watch in the right order, and you need to post to Discussion 6 before you start this web lab. So please do that first. Um, so uh, in this document, uh, what uh, you're going to do is you'll make some predictions about uh, what different substances will do. So if, you know which substance, iron, brick, water, or oil, will change temperature fastest. Which substance will hold the most heat? Which substance will change phases after it heats up? So before you go any further here, um, go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and finish these statements as far as your predictions. What matters is not really whether you're correct. We just want to kind of stake out a position and then test it and see, well, based on the simulator, was I right or not? So just pause if you haven't already and start to make a couple of these predictions. So uh, let's start off with uh, scenario one. Uh, I'm not going to go through and do every single one of these scenarios, but I'll at least show you a few um, so that we kind of know how, uh, how this works. The first thing that we need to do is to first just rank substances by how quickly they change temperature. Now, unfortunately, in the simulator, you can only watch the substances two at a time, but we have four. So we're sort of going to have to look at them in a few different combinations to, to rank them and figure out which one changes uh, temperature the fastest and which one changes temperature the slowest. And actually, as long as we have time, I guess I can actually go through all these. So when you go to the simulator, which is at this uh, link right here, it's a FET simulator. Um, FET is now transitioning their simulators to HTML, so what's nice is that you don't have to like download anything. It should just pop open in the actual uh, uh, in the browser. So uh, you're going to once you put that uh, um, URL in, you're going to click on Intro. You can play with systems if you want, but we're only going to spend our time in Intro. This will open up, and uh, the first thing that uh, this um, uh, simulator asks you to do is to take a pair of substances and set them on the burners and heat them up and see which ones uh, heat cooler and which ones heat faster uh, or which ones heat up you know the fastest so uh, we're going to compare brick and iron we're going to compare oil and water iron and water iron and oil brick and oil and then brick and water so in each of these situations we're going to see which one heats up fastest and then i'm going to leave it to you to rank them how do you actually rank them once you figure that out so to use the simulator um, all you have to do is just click and drag right so we can say well let's just go in order here uh, brick versus iron. Okay, so that's our first one. So we've got uh, let's put uh, let's put iron here and then brick here. Right, I'm just clicking and dragging. Um, I want to link the heaters so that they both turn on at the same time. I can I can drag this little uh, dial and I can make the heaters heat up. Uh, you can also take a thermometer and you can place it right on the substance that you're looking at. Uh, the little tip of the arrow is where it's measuring the temperature. So we've got iron, we've got brick, we've linked our heaters. Um, let's go ahead and, and heat these up. Notice both the heaters heat at the same time. And watch the thermometer for the iron and the brick as they're heating. Which one is heating faster? It looks like the brick is actually heating up a little bit faster because the brick's th temperature is higher than the iron, even though they've been on for the same amount of time. So what you would say for this first part is that in the brick versus iron, in this pair, the brick heats up faster than the iron. Okay, so that's the case in that one. Uh, let's do oil versus water. I'm going to come over here. Um, because I haven't used oil and water, I can just take these off and then put these guys on. But um, if you do want to reset all the temperatures, just click this little orange button, and this will reset everything to room temperature. So again, we're going to take our thermometers here, make sure our heaters are linked, heat everything up. So we've got oil versus water. As we're heating them, let's go ahead and watch. And it's pretty easy to tell right away the oil is heating up way faster than the water is. So the oil is much, much hotter at this point than the water is. So uh, oil versus water. In this pair, the oil heats up faster than the water. Let's do iron versus water. 
So here's where I'm going to restart everything. So it goes back to the original temperature. Uh, what do we say? Iron versus water. So we're going to go to iron, water, put the thermometers on them, link the heaters, heat everything up. That's pretty interesting. It looks like the e uh, the iron is heating up way faster. If you look at this thermometer on the left, this one has really cruised. This, the water is heating up pretty slowly. So in this case, the iron heats up faster than the water. Uh, and then we've got iron versus oil. Because we're going to reuse our iron, let's go ahead and refresh. So we've got our iron versus oil. The fact that it's olive oil isn't that significant. Most oils kind of behave the same. We're going to link our heaters, heat everything up. As we watch here, oh, this one's kind of closer. This is kind of neck and neck. So let's kind of watch. It looks to me like the iron is heating up just a little bit faster. Yeah, you might be able to tell the iron temperature is a little higher right now than the olive oil. So in this case, this means the iron versus oil. Iron heats up faster than the oil. Uh, brick versus oil. Let's kind of keep moving here. Refresh. Got our brick. Got our oil. Put our thermometers on. Link the heaters. Let's heat it up. So again, we're going to watch our temperatures. Looks to me like that brick is heating up quite a bit faster than the olive oil. So the brick is actually heating up faster. Yep, it's almost to the top already. So in this case, brick versus oil. The brick heats up faster than the oil. And uh, let's last do brick versus water. So let's jump over here. I, I bet I can predict what's going to happen because we know the brick heats up really quickly and the water heats up really slowly. So I bet that the brick's going to heat up a lot faster. All right, so let's do this last one. Yep, easy to tell. That brick is heating up way faster than the water. So we can tell that what should be kind of easy to tell is that the brick heats up really quickly, the water heats up really slowly, and the iron and olive oil are somewhere in between. So I'm going to leave it to you to kind of rank these to figure out, well, which ones changed fastest and which ones changed the slowest. So you're going to have to rank that, put that in order. should be able to do that based on what I just showed you. Let's jump ahead to scenario two. Uh, here you have to do a little bit of graphing. Um, so I've, I've given you this graph space and I've titled it Heat Contained by Substance. I want to show you something really neat. This is one of the cool things about this simulator. Um, we're going <clears> to <throat> refresh so that everything goes back to room temperature. And I want to show you what I, we can do on this simulator. If we click right here where it says Energy Symbols, if you look what has appeared inside these substances, we see these little red E's. Well, each little E is this sort of arbitrary unit of energy, of heat energy, thermal energy. So we can tell that these different substances don't have the same amount of energy in them, even though they're all the same temperature, right? If you take the thermometers and if you check them, they're all room temperature, right? They're all the same, but they have different amounts of energy in them. That's sort of interesting that we've got our water, our olive oil, brick, and iron. They all contain different amounts of energy. So we see these energy symbols. What you're going to do here is you're actually going to count how many energy symbols there are in each substance, and then you're going to graph it. Um, I already showed you in another video how to create a graph uh, online and how to, to edit that. Um, so uh, if you like, you can take a screenshot right now, or you can pause it, and you can count how many of each little uh, uh, red square. OK, so uh, let's jump over here to scenario three. Uh, in scenario three, what we're going to be doing is we're going to place each substance on the heater. We'll put the, 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 the uh, thermometer on it, and we're going to see the temperature at which the substance quits changing temperature. And uh, you can count the tick marks on the thermometer. Uh, we're going to do this for each substance. So if we jump over here, um, I've already gone ahead and placed my water on the heater, um, and um, we can um, we can we can do these two at a time. Uh, I don't see why we can't do them two at a time. So I'm going to link the heaters. Put uh, some thermometers on each of these, and uh, we're going to go ahead and heat them up. And we're going to see what's the point at which uh, each substance seems to quit changing temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it here on the olive oil and the water. And we can we already know the olive oil heats up a lot faster. And this is sort of interesting. If you look right away, if you take take a look at the water, you'll notice that uh, something's coming out of it, and it, its temperature is not changing anymore. Uh, so it's relatively low temperature that it quits changing. Over here with the olive oil, it's gone all the way to the top before it seems to have quit changing temperature. So the water is about maybe four tick marks, and the olive oil is all ten. So we're going to go ahead and set these back over here. That water is still kind of steaming. Let's take a look at the iron and the brick. Go ahead and put thermometers on those. Remember the brick heats up way faster than pretty much anything else. 
watch these temperatures climb. So of course the brick hits the maximum temperature first and it just maxes out. And then so does the iron. So both, so the brick, iron, and olive oil all get way up to the very top of the thermometer, but the water doesn't. That's sort of interesting that the water kind of stops right here. Uh, and actually notice, look how slowly the water's cooling off too. Not only does it heat up really slowly, it's, it's like just sitting there. It's like not even, it's barely cooling off. So that should sort of help you with scenario three. Um, we know that all the, the substances are going to go all go up to the very, very maximum temperature except for water. And water starts to do something. Uh, we start to see that stuff sort of puffing out of it um, once it uh, hits that maximum temperature. So I've gone through and I've done all the, the parts of the scenario uh, basically for you. Um, and here's some, uh, some questions that I really want you to think about. These are the interesting part is when you start doing these analysis questions and sort of thinking through what do these observations about water mean? So this is going to move us forward um, with, uh, you know, what's so special about water in terms of heat and, and, and temperature. Um, so I want you to go through and answer all these questions, do the best you can. Make sure at the very end that you generate some questions of your own. And uh, so I hope that this was helpful um, in uh, assisting you in how to figure out how to use the simulator uh, to explore the thermal properties of water.